So, hello everybody. In this video, I want to talk about three things. It's not only about the Kawaii K4 or Kawaii K4R, but it's also about how you run very old Atari ST software on a current Windows 11 computer. And as well, looking into controlling such an old synthesizer with a template here on the Electra 1, which allows you to use uh, this old device like kind of a wave station where you switch up samples and things, but more about that later. So stay tuned, even if you don't have a Kawaii K4 or are not interested in this one, it contains lots of information which might also help you with other synths and gets you new ideas. So let's jump right in. The Kawaii K4 or also the REC version, the R, is from 1990 and it was a follow-up of the Kawaii K1, which was my first synth and I still love up to date and for which there is a very great virtual emulation. So check out that as well from Neil Schneider. But the K4 is so far not available as a plugin and I was always lusting for one and was curious how much it improves over the K1. And now our prices are so cheap, I could not resist any longer and got myself a Kawaii K4R. The difference between the two is that the R has eight outputs instead of having some effects as the keyboard version has. The big drawback of the K1 was there was no filter at all, so the K4 shows an up with the filter and it's a very interesting quirky digital sounding filter which we will listen to in a second. But besides that it also brings 16 voices of polyphony and 8 part multi-temporality, which means you can play 8 different sounds at once up to 16 voices and you can layer these and create really really nice pads, lush pads and stuff like that. It's also very famous for its choir sounds with this low res attitude but things you don't get here is also very funny 303 emulation. Here I use the arpeggiator of the Hydrosynth. So just by coincidence someone released a template for the Electra 1 which allows you to control all these parameters of the Kawaii K4 from such a template and if I tweak the cutoff So this can really get very dirty and I will show you much more interesting tricks with that template uh, later on. But let's first talk a little about, about the K4. First thing you should always do with such an old synth is to check if it has the latest operating system or the latest firmware. And with the K4 and the R, the firmware is still on an EEPROM, so it's not simply updatable via SysX or something like that. You need to burn an EEPROM and if you feel safe with doing such things, here is a page where you can get the info and can also download the current OS, it's 1.4, mine still contains 1.2. So you can do that here on your own, but if you do not trust your capabilities with such a thing, it's always there are several people who are selling these online and I ordered that one here for eight euro. And if you're interested how I might fail <laughs> into putting an EEPROM into this device, just write me down in the comments and I will do a video about this as well as soon as it arrives. So next thing I was checking out to find any sounds, I thought for such an old synth you normally find tons of patches online and this was really difficult to find something here. So I found this page in the end which really kills your eyes but nevertheless it contains lots of great downloads. So if you go here on K4 down, uh, you see there are here lots of SysX data available and many many hundreds of sounds and this is really really nice and these are still all the patches I need to check out. By the way all the links will be down in the description of the video. So I already showed you this really really cool template. If you go to the Electro 1 library it's created by New Ignis and this was just released so just by coincidence it's now here. And yeah, if you have a Kawaii K4R, just try it out. I guess it will also work with a K4 because it's the same success protocol. And yeah, this is really cool. What can you do with that? The nice thing is there is a page here, dynamic notes, and this does something crazy. For each note, it allows you to replace the samples that I use. So what you can do here is you can say, 
you want to have anything different. It works especially great with drum sound. So let's go anything drum sound. And here you can simply say you want to have a range. So you can replace the next one if you're one or up to, ah, oh, that was wrong one, we need to go here. So you can say up to six samples or up to five samples. It should replace uh, going up and also the same going down. So we have now also three samples. It will replace down in the list and three samples upwards. And one thing you need to do is also the Electro One needs to receive the notes so it can trigger sending out. So I had a little patch here. So the HydroSynth is sending to both the Electro One as well as the K4R. And let's also try again with the sequencer. <laughs> let's turn down tempo. And you can also add a second one. You can get really the weirdest loops. You can also hear the Hydrosynth Apeciator has also a feature for ratcheting. And you have beats in seconds. By the way, you can do the same with the resonance. This is also working. Also, this can be here changed. So you can first turn down the resonance. And then you say it's also one up, one down, but you could also do more. So you can also tweak the envelopes here. You can also tweak the filter a bit more. You can also use the envelope for that. So absolutely nice loops. You can also use totally different loops. You don't have to use drum loops, but as I said, it works the best with drum sounds. But you should stop that for that. So let's go somewhere else. Let's go to whatever, glass harp. Let's pick something totally random. Also signs work very nice, I think. Let's go somewhere here. Yeah, I love it. It's just insane. So, so much for that. Next thing I was looking at is how can I get all these patches I found here on the side into the device and also manage them and all the current software I could find did either not work or were for lots of money, which I didn't see any point in it. <laughs> it was such a little thing to do. And yeah, and also on this page, I found the broken image file. This feels so 90s, it's, it's nice. 
Um, also on this page, there was a software here for Atari, Mac, Amiga, as well as PC, but PC is somewhere down Windows 3, so also I couldn't run that. But the Atari software was something I thought, okay, I had an emulator uh, some time ago, and there were actually lots of emulators. Also, not only for Windows, I, I used it on Windows 11, but there was also Linux emulators as well as Macintosh emulators for Atari ST. One to note is Hatari or Hatari or however this is pronounced. This runs really nice. This works also on all three OSs but you need to do the configuration via command line. So I was not so much in favor of that. And I'm also not sure if it supports MIDI. I did not check that. But a more easy one is here the Steam emulator with 2E. And this is available in two versions. So this site here provides the old 3.1, which also worked totally fine uh, on Windows 11. And you can just run it. What you need is an operating system, so the TOS file can also be downloaded here or from that page. But there's also a bug fixed version, which is newer, which is the Steam Engine, which you can find the link here. And so here, the latest one currently from the last year, and there's also a new beta here, is the SSE 4.1. So let's check out that. So this is the download. If you download that and if you simply run it, you will get an error and says it cannot find a file. And the thing is that it requires DirectX 9, which is not installed by default. So depending on your system, it's there or not. But that's also easy to get. There is also the download link in the manual here, but I will also post that link in the notes so that we get here the DirectX 9.29. And this is also easy to install. So here is a file. Let's do that. Let's go with that. Dang, dang, dang. No, we don't want the Bing Bar. Bing Bar. <laughs> what name is that? So, and that's finally it. And as I said, you only need that if you want to run the latest and the greatest, but the good, the previous 3.2, which I also have, runs without DirectX. So if you don't want to install anything, just use that one. And the only thing you need to do is start that file. So let's also try that one. This works as well. And there are now some questions you need to answer. Okay, do you want to have it in the start menu? Let's say yes to that. Uh, we need a file for the OS and you need to pick that. And I downloaded that as well. I have it here in the other version. Where is it? So there is the US version, but there's also the UK version. I'm not sure. I guess only some words are different in that. Yeah, we can create a hard disk. So you just name a folder where you copy all your files and this will then show up as a hard disk in the emulator, which is quite straightforward. And I copied already some software into just a folder. You can put this anywhere on your system. Go with that. Okay, we're done. But you can also configure that later on and we are ready to go. Basically, you can start that here with that arrow. So, and here it is, good old Atari ST. And the nice thing is it doesn't have to stay that small. You can just pull it bigger and it will get nicely and insanely big. And yeah, but there's some things we should configure. And as it says down there, you can press F11 to get your mouse back. And there you can get here the configuration. And what we should change, let's have a look what we can configure here. So you can tweak the speed as well, but you should not really do that. You should only stay with the machines that were really available or otherwise the software will behave badly. What we should do is we should switch from the color to the monochrome screen because all the professional software as editors ran on the monochrome version because the monochrome version had a larger screen. Therefore, you didn't have colors, but it was nicer to work on a larger screen. So, and what we also need to configure is a MIDI port. So, so the Atari ST had one MIDI in as well as MIDI output. And this was a big advantage of the Atari ST that you could directly sequence 
your synthesizers and for that we also pick here a port let's say we want to pick a MIDI device you can pick simply the port where connected a your synthesizer so here I'm using the iConnectivity Mio device I have which has a great feature to name the port so I can simply name it KVR and also here we pick the KVR and we're good to go so also that can be enlarged and we are still missing here it's funny if you do different sizes the gray will, pattern will <laughs> become different very funny so what we still need to do is a hard disk did somehow not show up you need to go here to the disk manager and there you need to say chemdos and there you can pick the folder and then you say okay and then it shows up here on the screen. We finally got that and then we can open here the C hard drive and there we have the different software. So for example here is these are the software I downloaded from the page I showed you. So the bank manager for example and oh my god I got feelings, <laughs> very warm feelings looking at these icons and it's really insane how much advanced the ST was back then in the day and you can here have the K4 bank manager and this is really a bank manager and let's check it out so we can say we want to receive something device timeout true because I have set the K4 to the channel 11 because it's required by the template so the template uses the media channel 11 so let's change that yeah so what is that? What's going on? Help! <laughs> okay, so uh, we got it. So this is really working nicely. This is insane. On a Windows 11 PC, I'm running this age-old software to manage your thing, your sounds. And there you got it. And here you can now also arrange them, I guess. Somehow I did not look that edit how that works. And let's let's leave that. And also the other one, this one is a nice editor. So here's also an editor, uh, there are multiple editors and managers in here, you can check them out all. And this looks also very funny. So here you can change also the different values, but I think the editor is nicer to use with the Electro 1 editor. But this one also has the option to edit the multis, which you can so far not do on the Electro 1. So do you crazy stuff like this as well? Are you running old ST or Amiga software to edit your synths? Please tell me down in the comments. I'm really curious about that. And I will really look into that and dive into that into the next days and weeks. And if you want to see anything specific or give you sound demos, just tell me down in the comments. And until next time, make some funky music.